Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. So, shall we plan what we have to do for this assignment? OK. First, we have to decide on our research question. So, how about... Is there a relationship between hours of sleep and number of dreams? OK. Then we need to think about who we'll do the study on. About... Twelve people? Right. And shall we use other psychology students? Let's use people from a different department. What about history? Yes, they might have interesting dreams. Or literature students. I don't really know any. OK, forget that idea. Then we have to think about our methodology. So we could use observation, but that doesn't seem appropriate. No. It needs to be self-reporting, I think. And we could ask them to answer questions online. But in this case, paper might be better, as they'll be doing it straight after they wake up. In fact, while they're still half asleep. Right. And we'll have to check the ethical guidelines for this sort of research. Hmm. Because our experiment involves humans, so there are special regulations. Yes. I had a look at those for another assignment I did. There's a whole section on risk assessment and another section on making sure they aren't put under any unnecessary stress. Let's hope they don't have any bad dreams. <laughs> yeah. Then, when we've collected all our data, we have to analyse it and calculate the correlation between our two variables. That's time sleeping and number of dreams and then present our results visually in a graph. Right, and the final thing is to think about our research and evaluate it. So, that seems quite straightforward. Yeah. So, now let's get started. So, shall we plan what we have to do for this assignment? OK. First, we have to decide on our research question. So, how about, is there a relationship between hours of sleep and number of dreams? OK. Then we need to think about who we'll do the study on. About 12 people? Right. And shall we use other psychology students? Let's use people from a different department. What about history? Yes, they might have interesting dreams. Or literature students? I don't really know any. OK, forget that idea. Then we have to think about our methodology. So we could use observation, but that doesn't seem appropriate. No. It needs to be self-reporting, I think. And we could ask them to answer questions online. But in this case, paper might be better, as they'll be doing it straight after they wake up. In fact, while they're still half asleep. Right. And we'll have to check the ethical guidelines for this sort of research. Hmm. Because our experiment involves humans, so there are special regulations. Yes. I had a look at those for another assignment I did. There's a whole section on risk assessment and another section on making sure they aren't put under any unnecessary stress. Let's hope they don't have any bad dreams. <laughs> yeah. Then, when we've collected all our data, we have to analyse it and calculate the correlation between our two variables. That's time sleeping and number of dreams. And then present our results visually in a graph. Right, and the final thing is to think about our research and evaluate it. So, that seems quite straightforward. Yeah. 
So now let's get started. Background. If you're preparing to take the IELTS test, you're not alone. Over 2 million people all over the world take the test each year. A knowledge of English is increasingly important for people who want to enter the higher education or work in countries where English is the first language. And IELTS is widely recognized by universities and colleges professional bodies, employers, immigration authorities, and other government agencies. Academic and General Training Tests There are two versions of IELTS, Academic and General Training or GT. When you enroll, you can choose which version you want to take. You should take IELTS Academic if you want to study in higher education, for example, on an undergraduate or postgraduate course at a university where the teaching is in English. You should take the general training version if you intend to live and work in an English-speaking country and need to show the migration authorities that you have the required level of English. Your teacher can advise you on the version which is appropriate for you, or you can contact the organization you intend to apply to and find out which one they require. The test. There are four parts to the test, listening, reading, writing and speaking, and you must take them all. The total test time is 2 hours and 45 minutes. The tests of listening and speaking are the same for all candidates, but the tests of reading and writing are different depending on whether you chose the academic or general versions. You do the listening, reading and writing tests on the same day, and usually the speaking test is done a few days before or after the other components. Scoring IELTS assesses your language knowledge and skills and gives you a band score from 1 to 9 in each of the four parts of the test, and also an overall band score from 1 to 9 for the whole exam, which is an average of the scores for each part. There is no pass or fail in IELTS because the college, university, or organization you're applying to will tell you the band score you need to achieve. IELTS Band Scores Band 9, Expert User Has fully operational command of the language. Appropriate, accurate and fluent with complete understanding. Band 8, Very Good User Has fully operational command of the language with only occasional unsystematic inaccuracies and inappropriances. Misunderstandings may occur in unfamiliar situations. Handles complex detailed argumentation well. Band 7, good user. Has operational command of the language, though with occasional inaccuracies, inappropriaces, and misunderstandings in some situations. Generally handles complex language well and understands detailed reasoning. Band 6, Competent User Has generally effective command of the language despite some inaccuracies, inappropriaces, and misunderstandings. Can use and understand fairly complex language, particularly in familiar situations. Band 5, Modest User Has partial command of the language, coping with overall meaning in most situations, though is likely to make many mistakes should be able to handle basic communication in own field. Band 4, Limited User Basic competence is limited to familiar situations. Has frequent problems in understanding and expression. Is not able to use complex language. Band 3, Extremely Limited User conveys and understands only general meaning in very familiar situations. Frequent breakdowns in communication occur. Band 2, Intermittent User No real communication is possible except for the most basic information using isolated words or short formulae in familiar situations and to meet immediate needs. Has great difficulty understanding spoken and written English. Band 1, Non-User 
essentially has no ability to use the language beyond possibly a few isolated words. Band Zero did not attempt the test no accessible information provided.